Well, here you go, everyone. Josh, the collector guy. Hope you all had an awesome week this week, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're able to find some awesome cars for your collections during the week. Well, got a massive lot of cars to get through today. And no, I, all these weren't from eBay this week. These are pretty much variations I'm going to compare to with a few of my finds from this week. What have been sort of built up over the last couple of weeks or so. Is that I'd like to keep it in order for what I show each and every week instead of bombarding everyone with a big massive lot of cars but like to, like this week you could say but yeah there's a lot of as you can see 80s Corvettes and that and a few Cadillacs and that and a few other things will coincide with the video and the car those two Chevy citations that I actually found them in my room surprisingly enough so I didn't have to go too far for them but scrummaged around through them a few of my boxes um, a few weeks ago and I managed to stumble across them and I seem to have completely forgotten that I that I had them in the collection how terrible was that but anyway I will jabber on about a whole heap of things this week ladies and gentlemen as you can see it's pretty much all 80s era stuff but first up we'll start off with flea market finds from this week went to the flea market today went by myself because dad didn't really feel like going to the flea market but that's all right i guess you're going to take a break now and again from going there but i went to the two flea markets we usually go to and that they're not really too far away from each other probably about 20 minutes half an hour straight drive from one to the other you could say but it's certainly worth it well it certainly was worth it today nevertheless that the first one i went to I managed to find something I remember greatly from when I was a kid, the old mighty micro machines. Now, conveniently enough, where I've, the micro machines at the first market I went to, that was the market I remember from when I was a kid. We always found micro machines at, but it, I think, um, last, well, 10 years or so, or maybe even more than that. I remember going there when I was a kid, it was across the road, but later on in time it, it's moved across the road and that's where it, it now sits anyway and it's pretty much around a fruit market and that but th they're still pretty good those markets anyway but anyway back to the story remember always going to that market anyway when i was a kid dad and i and my brother as well we always used to find the little micro machines i have a good memory of looking in a little ice cream container at them all and picking out a few and that which was pretty cool and still to this day still love the old micro machines and they still have hundreds hundreds and hundreds of them somewhere around the house i must look for them one day I, i've probably said that in past videos when i found micro machines but it's something i always remember greatly from when i was a kid and had heaps of fun with it as well but the first car i'll start off with is the old little chevrolet zr1 corvette now this isn't a micro machine it happens to me a marjorette which is something else always used to play it well vehicles always used to play with when i was a kid but the larger scale versions like the size of the hot wheels you could say pretty much and never knew they actually did micro cars at all these are micro sonic races so uh or flashes might i say so i assume the tail lights do something i thought that was pretty cool never knew marjorette did something like that but now i certainly do and they look pretty cool might i say and these lot just this lot just here i assume would be definitely micro machines because you can tell that one's a beautiful jaguar i think it's an xjs or something like that i know hot wheels do a good version of it probably my favorite jag of all time i would have to say whoops it now just dropped it that one's really nice indeed and everyone knows i love my nomads couldn't resist this one i think that might be it's either a 55 or 56. That one's really nice as well. I think I got these for a good deal because you can't really find micro machines anymore. And I got this package deluxe collection set and pretty cool little features on each one just here. They have opening bonnets and doors. I do remember that from a couple of the micro machines. They had, well I know with the trucks and that, they had tilting cabs and opening doors and that if you could get them open because they were that, that small. As you can see, it's like classic cars. I think that one's a Ford Vicky. That one's a, um, it's got it underneath, a, a Duesenberg. I do love the Duesenbergs and the Packard just there. So really cool little set. I think that was $10. I thought it was worth it because I have looked on eBay 
at some package sets of the micro machines and I think they want $20, $20 and up for some of them. I think some of them do go for quite a bit of money these days. Brings back a lot of great memories looking on the back here at a few of the sets. And it says it's from, I think it had 89 so I assume it might have been 98, 1990 this is from so that's pretty cool. Has it somewhere on the back, I'm not going to waste time looking at it. So I'm very happy with that. Very, really cool indeed. Really nicely presented. Does bring back a lot of great memories we had with the micro machines and really cool lot of cars and how they assembled them and that. That's really cool. And cool to have opening features on it when cars this size like the Hot Wheels don't have features like that. So I reckon that's really awesome. Moving on now too, I went to the next flea market and I managed to find another one of the 48 car carry cases that that was only five bucks that was certainly well worth it as well i haven't really looked at inside it might need a little bit of a clean out but still that was a good bargain from the flea market very happy with those finds this week all right now pretty much we are at the ebay finds for the week so well last couple of weeks you could say because i do like to show certain things at certain times and that yes and there is still stuff i still need to share with you all but Later videos, I will get to all that stuff eventually, but we'll start off with some hot ones, I reckon. They're quite hot to touch as well, so I can't hold on to them for too long. Just kidding, they're not hot at all, but they're very cool. I love the card art on the hot ones, and even the earlier card art as well of the hot ones, like the Chevy Citation just there. Managed to score another variation of the Racing Stocker. Really cool casting this one. I love the paint scheme. I do believe Daryl Waltrip did have this paint scheme back in the 80s when he raced. And of course the car was a Buick. That one's really nice. They, Hot Wheels did an excellent job on that one. And this is the one I've had for quite a while now. And as you can see, you could probably gather there's a variation in the card. As you can see, this one's got the copywriting, you could say, for Mountain Dew. Whereas this one doesn't. And another really awesome variation is that the top one I've had for a while was made in Hong Kong and the bottom one is the Malaysia variation so very pleased with that there's a variety of very excuse me variations on each and even unpunched and punched if you really want to call that a variation I know I did once upon a time but it probably really isn't but still really cool and I think the one really to look out for is either Mountain Dew Stocker or NASCAR Stocker so but I think they sell for over $100 or something like that in, in carded condition, I would say. I'm just throwing a price out there. It probably isn't true, but I know my Tom Mart's book says that. But I know sometimes you can't really go buy the books because you go on eBay and it's double, if not triple, the price sometimes. Or if not, a lot less than the book. So, But you pay what you feel comfortable with. I know I do, just to have the car sometimes, but... That's just the way it is anyway. I'm sure a lot of you out there know what I'm talking about. Now we, I think I'll get to the 57 Chevy next. Scored another variation of this one. That one I've had for a little while now and pretty much the only real variation in it is on the card back. As you can see it's got the collector's handbook off of there whereas this one doesn't. That's probably not really much of a variation but it's kind of a card variation and I quite like collecting all that kind of stuff. I know a lot of collectors probably think I'm nuts but that's the way I am I guess I am absolutely nuts I think I'm more nuttier than a bag of nuts you could say but anyway love the old 57 Chevy casting probably one of my all-time favorite castings Hot Wheels have ever done probably my in my top three of my favorite cars of all time and you can probably only guess what number two and number one are now we get to the very late 80s ones just here, got the old 80s Corvette, another variation what I didn't have, the bag in the back is not coloured at all whereas you'll probably see on these three just here, try and do a juggling act, as you can see they're all coloured in the back there like a, like a cream colour and that and the hoods are, well one of the hoods on that one isn't painted at all whereas the other two are is the one on this one no so that's another variation as well so i've got four different variations of the 80s corvette and the blue with the 88 tampo old dale jr's number as well hope he goes well tomorrow or today 
So four of them, and that's why I got these ones out too, because I've pretty much got three of each. So whether it be a card variation, like the international card just there, and if like certain things are placed on it, I'm usually always interested in it. And I think the bottom Corvette is just the flat grey instead of the metallic grey. So I think that one might be a bit harder to get or vice versa or anyway. So as you can see, three of them. And I've probably touched on these just recently as well. Three different variations of the black Corvette as well. Looks very tough in black. So as you can see... I'm quite nuts with this 80s Corvette and I think I bought the red one the other week, the red 80s Corvette and I probably will end up finding two more different variations of that one in the not too distant future. So as I said many a time during my videos I always like seeing how the cars are always lined up exactly like how it is and pointing out all the different variations between them because it's amazing to see how many variations there are for just one car as you can see with the Corvette having them carded probably loose you wouldn't be able to see many variations but having them carded whether it be on the card on the back or the front or whatever and even the car in general as well and even bliss the blisters do change as well as you can see a few of the blisters are different that's how nuts I am with the variations but I think that's really cool seeing how many you can gather up all together I know it's sort of like that with a few red lines, like with the old Nomads up there, just the colours and that, because they didn't really have interior var variations. But with the custom Camaro I collect in the red line here, I know I've got a fair few different variations of that. And it's awesome to have them all in a bunch and seeing how many Hot Wheels did back in the day, because it's quite amazing when you think about it that, well, there's four variations of that particular Corvette. There possibly would be more anyway, so I think that's really cool. I know a lot of collectors just say one's enough, that's it, move on to the next car. But I always like trying to mix things up and trying to find different variations for the car. But anyway, as you can see, I've jabbered on about that. Now on to the classic caddy. That's why I got this lot out too, because they're all different variations. These ones I've had in my collection for a while. As you can see, they're on international card with the Rainbow Road, I think that one's called. And also just the one with the... Um, I forgot what that one's called. I don't think that's a Mercedes. I think it's I think it's another car, but anyway, and just got the normal half blue card just there, which probably doesn't really count, but it's still the same car with another variation on it. And this one I've added to the collection as well. And I have been told there is a variation with them, and yes, this one here will will help me with it. As you can see, it's got the rivet at the front there. And just the clip at the back, whereas the later variation or another variation what did did exist around the time, it's got two rivets. I only got told that the other day as well. So that's another variation I shall keep a, keep an eye out for, keep a track of, you could say. So that's really awesome indeed. Always love finding my variations, if you can't tell. And I have found the blue card variation of that one, which I shall share at a later date. I'm pretty sure that one's a little bit hard to get. I think that's all of this lot just here. Now, moving on to probably just a real quick little talk about these little Chevy Citations. I forgot what box it's in. As you can see, my room's a mess at the moment with all the boxes on the floor looking for stuff. But um, I was in one of my boxes and I didn't even realise I had them. And... I think they're quite cool. I love the little Chevy Citations. Got the, it on the older, very first Hot Ones card, just like... No, no, it's not, because that's the first Hot Ones card, what the old 442 is. But anyway, I'll just talk jibber for five seconds just there. But as you can see, obviously, at one point in time, they thought Hot Ones are coming out. We'll just stamp it on top of this card to probably say production costs, maybe. So that one's really awesome. That'd be a Hong Kong. Most certainly is. But I think my favourite out of the um, my carded citations would have to be the Flying Colours one, which is the much, much earlier card. And this one has black walls on it too and made in Hong Kong. And it's on an international card as well, which I think is even cooler and a lot harder to find. And someone paid $1.20 back in the day, or $120, $119. I think I said 120 it was a dollar 19 pardon me I think that's really cool love this particular card variation love that Porsche the rescue Ranger or whatever it's called in the old super van
I do have a, a um, Corvette Stingray on this same card as well with black walls, I think it is. And I don't think I've ever seen another, so I think that's really awesome. And funnily enough, I've had them in the collection for a while and I only just stumbled across them a couple of weeks ago. I'm sure there's a lot more treasures in my boxes in my room that I've completely forgotten about, which is a bit terrible, but... I don't know if any of you other collectors out there are like me, but I seem to be quite forgetful with some of my cars, but nevertheless, the more the merrier. And I think last but not least for this week's video, ladies and gentlemen, it's the old Meebie Toys Flying Colors Olds 442 Police Cruiser just here. Managed to score this one from pretty much the same seller I think I got my 57 Chevy and the Duesenberg from. Obviously the seller didn't well, I mean, the buyer didn't, because I know that was up for bids too at the same time, but I obviously got the second chance offer, and I thought, may as well take it, because I don't think I'll find another one. These ones I've had for a while, and if any of you collectors do collect the old Meebie Toys vehicles, I do suggest putting them in this kind of protective case, because it does display it quite well and protect them quite well as also, so... And I discovered that the other day. It's really cool. And you can also put your French carded Hot Wheels. How they're on the little flat blister pack. And these things as well. As well. You can put three across. So they, they help protect it as well. But anyway. Back to the Olds 442. Really love the Olds 442s. Beautiful car. Beautiful casting. And the much earlier Redline version is worth a whole heap of money. And... I don't think I'll be finding one anytime soon, but I do have another version of this Olds 442, but someone has ripped it apart and turned it into a red line and put stickers on it and that, and I didn't know at the time, but after you build knowledge up after a few years or so, you, you point things out, you, you notice if it's real or not. I'm sure a lot of you collectors know what I'm talking about. I have been stung before on a few cars, but that's just the way it is, I guess. It's something I always learn in the hobby beautiful olds 442 love the tampo design and everything really cool idea for the police car and here's the box pretty much how Hot Wheels were marketed in the European market and I do believe Mattel bought out Meebie toys back in obviously this this would have to be the very late 70s early 80s so and I do believe they would have come out as a red line as well but my one happens to be a black wall but that doesn't matter it's still awesome nevertheless really cool box that's how they came out in really cool idea just like the Japanese red boxes as well so I recommend to you if any of you guys and girls out there do have an opportunity to buy a Mibi Toys car for a good price I highly recommend you jump on it because they're quite rare in my opinion, even though I've got five in the collection, but that's not really as much as what some people would have. But I have seen others, but been unlucky and been unlucky to not get them. But still, awesome to have in the collection. Awesome to see how Hot Wheels were marketed in different parts of the world anyway, nevertheless. Like the Japanese red boxes and that. And, well, there's so much more. It, there's so much to talk about, but that's pretty much about it, how... They will market even Japanese stuff, Germ German stuff as well. It's awesome seeing it all. And I would like some of those in the collection as well. But anyway, on that minor bombshell, that's pretty much it for this week's video, everyone. Really hope you did enjoy. Thank you to all everyone who tunes in each and every week to watch the video, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I really, really do appreciate it. I hope... You all maybe learnt something new in today's video because I do enjoy sharing a lot of information with you guys and girls out there and really appreciate all those kind comments all of you leave each week. Thank you very much. Well, anyway, that's it for this week's video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching and remember, as always, everyone, happy hunting, keep the hobby strong. See you later, everyone. Have an awesome week.